I'm on the deck of Battleship Texas standing in front of one of the 40mm Bofors anti-aircraft mounts. These were used to fight off kamikazes in the Pacific Theater. I'm Trevzor, and we're talking ship. So I'm back here with Keith, and uh, we're going to talk about a lot of the different AA equipment we have here on Battleship Texas. We're standing on top of some 40 millimeter Bofors cannons. Uh, tell me about these. How do these work? Well, the Bofors are anti-aircraft. Uh, they come with uh, four round clips that are fed up to loaders. The loader would be where I'm standing and where you're standing here. They take that four inch clip and they feed it down into each gun of the four guns. This has a capability of range of about four miles. It can fire between 120 and 160 rounds a minute. It takes about 12 men to run this gun. And there's a primary and secondary way of firing this gun. The primary way is in this tub up above the gun. It's called a gun director. The man up there uses that director and turns it. And that director will turn this gun right to left and elevate the barrels. He also has a trigger up there to fire the gun. You still have uh, a uh, trainer and a pointer in the seats. If the director is to fail, there's a switch on the gun that goes to local. The trainer and pointer take over and they manually raise and lower and turn the gun and fire with a foot pedal over here on the pointer side of the gun. So when you are up in that tub as the, the gun director, how are you sure you're going to be aiming where you want to be aiming? Because you're not anywhere near these guns. There's actually a scope, like, a, like a, a double glass window on that gun with a sight, and you're using that sight to aim at the plane that you're firing at. Oh, fancy. So like that is that accurate out to how far? Like What is it measured out to? Uh, depending on the elevation of the guns, these guns could be accurate up to four miles. Wow, that's really impressive. And so these these 40 millimeter projectiles, uh, these ones are demilled, so they're empty. They have no powder in them. And they're awful heavy. Uh, you have two guys up here just constantly slamming these in here. Um, how many of these four round clips would you go through in, say, a minute? Well, in a minute, you could go through up to 160 rounds. Wow. So, so four 40 of those? Into 160, yeah. Wow, that's, that's. And you have guys on the deck that are actually pulling these. Uh, four four round clips from these cups on the side. Wow. And they're constantly feeding the gun loaders that are up here. The that's, loaders are constantly feeding these. That's very, very impressive. And so uh, we're also going to talk about some of the other AA equipment that we have here on Battleship Texas. Uh, you have 20 millimeter Olacrons as well, and you have one of their magazines right here, and this thing is no joke either. It's a beast. Right. The 20 millimeter Orlicon, the Battleship Texas, actually had 44 of these anti-aircraft guns mounted on it in World War II. The uh, magazine holds 60 rounds. The gun can fire 60 rounds in about eight seconds. Uh, one of, they fire high explosive rounds, but one of the rules of loading this magazine is because you could always have a blockage in your barrel, you put 58 rounds of high explosive in there and two rounds of normal shells in the last two. That way the first two rounds out are non-explosive shells in case there is a blockage. The guns can fire up to five or six of these in a row without damaging the barrel. Beyond that, you either have to pour water on the barrel to cool it or you have to replace the barrel, which takes about 30 seconds. Wow. So. Compared to this crew, how many people are manning, say, one, one space of, of Olicrons? One Orlicon crew would be three to four people. Uh, you'd have a gunner, a sight setter. Uh, you have a column adjuster who can actually raise the gun depending on what the gunner needs. And then you have the loader. Wow. who puts the magazines on. The magazines weigh about 70 pounds when they're full. When we first started this sh this uh, sequence, you were holding a massive three inch shell. Right. Tell me more about the three inch guns and what they're for. The three inch guns were originally put on the ship in 1916. They were some of the first anti-aircraft guns on the ship. A lot of times in World War I, the guns were used to shoot down Zeppelins. Uh, zeppelins are what the German Navy used as scouts to try and find enemy ships. The three inch gun fires a 13 pound projectile and has a range of about seven miles. It has a high explosive round, and it has a shrapnel round, and an illumination round. Uh, it takes four to five guys 
uh, to fire the three inch guns and they can fire between 12 and 15 rounds a minute. That's that's a lot. 12 to 15 rounds just out of a three inch gun is, right. is definitely no joke, especially when you're trying to take down Zeppelins. Right, and the guns were actually dual purpose guns because they could be lowered below level. So these guns would be used to fire at any submarines that might surface. Okay. Uh, U-boats, things like that. And, or if they're close enough to shore, they could fire on shore with their explosive rounds as well. Wow, so so very very utilitarian on those. You don't have to rely on the big 14 inches to do all the the ship to ship combat. Right. Fantastic. That's really great. So, um, just coming off of this, back to this this 40 millimeter, uh, as a as a fire director, you guys can move this pretty easily, uh, just by rotating a couple small wheels. What's the gear reduction like on this thing? It's got to be a lot, right? Like right. you're spinning those things, easy, and, it's, and it spins really smooth. You guys have done a fantastic job restoring these. Right. I don't know what the gear ratio is on that, but yes, you're right. It is. It has got to be very high to be able to turn this easy. Indeed. And uh, what's so you have a couple different mounts of these on this ship. Some of them in a, a little less repair than others. You're slowly going through and getting all of these uh, restored. What's the restoration process like? Uh, we have volunteers that do a lot of restoration on these guns. Uh, they come and there's, it's, it's a lot of work. Uh, you have to grind them, uh, sometimes have to weld them, and then you have to have people who are familiar with the gears and the, the other t things that are required on it. Then you have to prime the guns, paint them. It's quite a bit of work to restore just one of them. So one installation of, of these guns, how long do you think that would take? Uh, quite a few months to, to get one back wow. to back to the way this one looks now that's that's really impressive and you the the fact that these turn as smoothly as you have demonstrated for us is amazing so you guys have done a fantastic job keith thank you so much for giving all of us this information not a problem uh, i i'm in complete shock it's amazing uh thank you guys for watching this has been talking ship good luck fair seas and we'll see you out there Remember everybody, Battleship Texas needs your help. Yes, come visit her or go to our website, battleshiptexas.org, battleshiptexas.org.